interruptions. You just got to wait. Amen. 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 Again, once again, it's I don't have to say much about Bishop, but his spirit is really in this house. Myself, this church is part of Christ's covenant coalition of great men of God and women of God across across this nation that come together with one mind and one accord to see God's kingdom just manifested in our midst. Yes. So there he is. <laughs> church plays in for that honor that I could be here. And so um, there are books that uh, and also if you want to get some resources every day on social media on my website josephmatera.org uh, and then you can sign up for it. And uh, hopefully that will be a blessing to you. Amen. So let's just pray. Father, we open up our eyes to see you in a deeper way. Amen. So what I want to do Principles of the New Testament Church. Amen. Principles in the New Testament Church is you guys have planted this church not that long ago. I think that it's important to continue to build on this solace. Uh, and uh, some of this is in my book on essays on apostolic leadership. I'm not even sure if they're here. But um, those that are very, very simple but yet very profound as we look at it. So we're going to primarily focus on the Church of Antioch. I didn't come here to get you excited, but to give you understanding. I yes. preach, but I didn't come here to preach. Not that there's anything wrong with preaching, but I came here to teach. So preach to inform us, but to inspire us. To Luke, the Gospel of Luke was what, rather, the Book of Acts is what Jesus continued to do through the. Always had the church in mind in the Gospels. That's why it's uh, erroneous, it's an error to think you can make disciples without a local church. Yeah. And there are people who think that because the and Jesus always had the local church in mind, as we could see in John 14 through 16, when he told them, it's better for you that I go away. Mm -hmm. If I go away, I'm going to send another comforter will abide with you forever. He'll bring to your remembrance all things that I've spoken. So he always had the church in mind. He said, the works that I do, you will do greater. He said in John 14, 12, greater works than these will you do because I go to my Father. Amen. And so he was anticipating with excitement when he would ascend into heaven, go to his Father, and then the spirit that was on him was then going to come into his they were going to do greater works. So he always had the church in mind. Amen. You can't make disciples outside of a local church in its fullness. Uh, after his crucifixion, he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom. And then in the Holy Spirit. And then we find that they went into the upper room after he ascended into heaven. And they, uh, with one accord, began... Praying, it says in verse 14, and it tells us that there was about 120 in the upper room. Mm -hmm. But they didn't just pray. Again, it's erroneous to think that all they did was pray for 10 days. Mm -hmm. God was bringing them into a process of oneness. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we pray for unity, but we need to pray for oneness. Yes. Unity is temporary. Unity is, you know, we come together. Right now we're in unity. Mm -hmm. but we're, we're not all in oneness. Mm -hmm. We're in unity. Day. We want to hear the word. We want to worship. But not everybody here is in oneness, to be quite honest with you. That's good. Uh, it's based on an event. It's temporary. Oneness is based on a lifestyle. Yeah. It's when your heart, not your spirit, but your heart, which is your emotions, you're invested in one another. You're joyful. You're joyful with those who are joyful. You just care for yourself. That's what oneness is. Yeah. You have to develop trust. You have to develop understanding of one another's gifts, calling. You have to celebrate that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Matthew 18 talks about go to him and him alone or her and her alone. And then you begin a process of walking in the light. And if you cannot come to any kind of peace, that's when you bring in an elder. And then other elders if you have to. And you deal with it in a godly manner. Amen. That's good. And that's the process of oneness. Oneness yes. doesn't mean that you're always in agreement. 
It means that you're always walking in love and humility. And uh, even if someone doesn't, you learn how to forgive. And uh, you know, you have to be a person who's emotionally healthy, not just spiritually healthy. Yes, amen. So emotional health is absolutely as essential as spiritual health. Because you can't have one without the other. I don't care how good you can preach or prophesy, but if you get a of bitterness and unforgiveness, yes. uh, if you have thin skin, if you rise up in anger, then you're not emotionally mature. So it doesn't matter how good you can prophesy or preach. You know, it doesn't matter how good you can dance or sing, and even if you can be the worship leader. I'm sure they, they kind of process what was going on in light of Jesus' resurrection. So everything they knew about the gospel, so now they had to reinterpret in light of the fact of his death, burial, and resurrection. So they couldn't just go out there and do it. And this is, you know, the first time he wasn't with them because even after he rose, he was with them for 40 days. That's right. So now they're alone and they didn't even have the Holy Spirit yet. So uh, they began already because Jesus breathed on them. But the Holy Ghost fell on them when? Not just because it was the day of Pentecost, which means 50, it's the end gather. We're all in one accord is the key to seeing any church explode with efficiency, growth, mm. power, and uh, synergy. Jesus taught us in John 17, uh, verse 20, he said, 21, he said, he prayed to the Father, that they would all be one, even as you, Father, are in me. He didn't say that they all may be united. The body of Christ is praying for unity, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. He's saying, I want you to be one with him and with one another. Isn't that amazing? I pray that they all may be one, even as you, Father, are in me, one in us, that the world may have the anointing and the power to attract the world to Christ. Mm -hmm. Then it said to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Mm -hmm. Now you might ask, why was teaching mentioned first and not prayer? Mm -hmm. A lot of people think prayer is more important than the word. Mm -hmm. Well, teaching was mentioned before, and it was even mentioned before breaking of bread or communion, mm -hmm. agape feast when they had dinner together. Why was <laughs> teaching mentioned first? Because to fellowship. Amen. How and why to pray if you don't get taught? Amen. You need teachers. That's Hebrews 5.11. You need someone to teach you what be the elementary or first principles of the doctrine of Christ. <coughs> then in chapter 6 of Hebrews it move on to perfection now. Yes. Now what he's saying is now that you know or once you know the elementary truths, then we can Martial arts or boxing, the first thing they teach you is how to stand. Because if you don't have balance, there's, there's no power in that. You, know, you got to go like that. Very teaching yeah. is Christ. Yes, yes. Very and true. then he says in Hebrews 6, not laying again the foundation of dead works, uh, of repenting from dead works, of the resurrection of the dead. If I have to constantly yes, yes, remind yes. you of these other things, right. Right. Yeah. you can't go any further if you don't apostles teaching Amen. then it says fellowship there are some churches they're just like a big social uh i don't know thank you need to travel with me and give me <laughs> there's something to be said about if all you do is come to church for your friends and you're not getting taught and it's just good fellowship you're missing something that's right that's and there's some people come to a church because it's great prayer deep yeah. worship yeah. but if you're not learning the word of god that's right, that's right. See, that's first and foremost. You got to learn the Word of God. When I first got saved, I was a professional guitar player. Music. Not that I didn't love it anymore, but I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and then the prayer life was activated. But I thank God I started off in the Word. Amen. And I thank God that I had a strong. We're informed and shaped by Scripture, not shaped by. Out of their emotions, out of their soul. They don't even quote the word of God. They don't know the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. There are people who are praying for healing. They'll never get healed because they're in hope and in desperation, but you need to be in faith. How are you going to be in faith if you don't know the word of God? 
You know, if we don't know God's will, how are we going to pray according to his will? Amen. So the apostolic church was framed with the teaching of scripture. <laughs> then it says to fellowship. Then it says to the breaking of bread and to prayer. <laughs> then a sense of awe. And many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. <laughs> and all those who came were in common. And it says, we're sharing them with all, as anyone might have need. Sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. Signs and wonders, we want to see a lot of people saved. Mm -hmm. But notice, before any of that took place, mm -hmm. they were devoted to the apostles' doctrine, mm -hmm. teaching, yeah. fellowship. And then it says, they who believe. So there's got to be a corporate oneness yeah. for an apostolic church. You're not an apostolic church because you call yourself one. You're an apostolic church because you're one and you're putting apostolic practices. And so they were all together socialists. There are people uh, that I can mention their names, you know, and they, Jim Wallace and others, I, I'll mention their name. And they use these things to say that God was a socialist. No, there wasn't any forced mandate to share their possessions. Exactly. They voluntarily did it. Yes. Why? Because they were reading Acts 2 from all these different places, and they left their place to live. They needed someone to feed them. They had nothing. They only had enough food and money for a probably of two weeks to a month to make the trek over to Jerusalem. So the church was... What do we do? Do we love ourselves more or we love God more? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some people said, hey, you know, if I don't sell my house, these people won't stay. Mm -hmm. They sold their homes, right. their land, laid them at the apostles, put a lot of people up in their homes. Yeah. And, uh, and so in order for the church to, people, some people had to leave everything. The people in Jerusalem had to share everything. Yeah. 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 See that? Yeah. Some left everything, but those in Jerusalem shared everything. Mm -hmm. It costs something to be a follower of Jesus, Amen. to be an apostolic Amen. church. Amen. And if they didn't do that, those 3,000 that got saved would have never been rooted, would have never continued on, and the Jerusalem church would have died off. That's true. There's some people, if you don't make the sacrifice God is calling you to make, finance will not go on. Amen. It's all part of the process. God tests certain churches. And there are certain people in the church and he's testing them and he's telling them you got to give up a lot more than what you are now. Because these people began selling their property, their possessions, were sharing them with all as anyone had need. Just, you know, a quick thing. It was a dinner. It was a meal together. House to house. With gladness and sincerity of heart, and that's why God yeah. constantly added to that church. Mm -hmm. So we see that there was an amazing release yes. of God's presence, power, of people, of everything needed. Because, but truth be told, for the kingdom. Yes, that's right. And uh, I can tell you some of the things I've had to do in my tests, and God has never failed me. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Amen. Because I knew that our church had to go to another high esteem. And all the more believers to such an extent that they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and pallets so that at least when Peter walked by, his shadow might fall on the vicinity of Jerusalem, cities and other places, uh, bringing people who were sick or afflicted were all being healed. Mm -hmm. You see that the apostolic church was not confined to a building. That's right. Place, right. even more than the church place. As a matter of fact, I'm yes. not aware that Jesus did healings inside of a building that was a synagogue, except for Mark chapter 1, where Man you find the unclean spirit crying out. Uh, there might be another place uh, when he healed a few people, but most of what all of life. Yes. So how to apply the Bible to every aspect of your life. Amen. So marriage, help your business, help you as a parent help the church shouldn't just help Amen. and then we see that this apostolic church uh, you know what I'm going to skip some of this I want to go to Antioch because I'm just dealing with Jerusalem now let's go to the church of Antioch the church of Antioch became the most powerful 
connection with Stephan, made their ways. There were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who came to Antioch and began speaking to non-Jews, to Greeks, and preaching the Lord Jesus. A great number of them turned to the Lord. And news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas. He witnessed the grace of God and rejoiced and began to encourage them that with purpose of heart they may remain true to the Lord. Then it says he went and got Paul a whole year, and it was in Antioch where they were first called Christians, verse 26. Uh, and then it says in verse 27 to uh, verse uh, 30 that they took an offering for the church in Jerusalem. So going back to verse 19, we see that this Antioch church was born in persecution. Mm -hmm. Now, when we notice this church, very, very powerful church, that, uh, we'll find in chapter 13, they were multi-ethnic, multi, -ethnic, multi -lot of persecution, and they lost everything, and they were scattered. So here they are as refugees mm -hmm. preaching the gospel, and these refugees, these immigrants, transcended. It was more powerful than the Jerusalem church. That's right. mm -hmm. And before we start castigating refugees, we have to understand the greatest church in history was started by refugees. People who were persecuted, some of whom were killed, some of whom lost their family, displaced, disenfranchised, uh, no money, no nothing. But because they were rooted in the apostles' everything, they still preached. That's it. Some of us, we will drops about 30 percent it's well praise god we're having a real church now yeah. <laughs> and phonies a hard god in here i notice that whatever rains really hard the power of god falls yes. upon yeah. in church on Hallelujah. sunday and so these people nowadays people are so spoiled in this country they walk around with anger come on, come on. walking around protesting hating coming against everything and everybody because they were hurt and they have pain Join the club. We all are hurt. We're all victims. We all have pain. When my friends found out my mother was a Puerto Rican and they saw how dark her skin was, they started making fun of me and stole us until I started giving them back to them, even worse. Did you know that? They were actually called the N-word because they had olive skin. So you got to understand that every group, now nothing has ever been as even remotely close to what we did to the but. What we did there was worse than any group. But the point is, we all go through pain. Yeah. We all go through hurt. Very true. This group was so committed to Jesus mm. Mm. Yeah. that they started the greatest church the Hallelujah. world has ever seen, Jesus. even though they were refugees. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Yeah. You're a victor. Without him, you're a victim. Yes. Yes. I'm not paying you for that. Word yes. over yes. them, a major meta narrative. Everyone, every church is called to preach the gospel, you know, like Matthew 28, Mark 16. But there is a specific word, and the word over this church was that with purpose of heart, mm. they remain true to the Lord. So, an apostolic church is a purposeful church, mm. it's a church of purpose, yeah. there's strategic planning. Yes. There's prayer, there's prophetic words, trying to yes. sense what God wants to do. Yes. They don't just show up to have an anointed meeting. Yes. Amen. Some pastors, they're happy if they just have an anointed meeting. Tell a donkey yes. what to say to a prophet. <laughs> I mean, we want to have anointed meetings, but we have to have long-term vision and strategy and goals. Yes. <sighs> Not just have a good service on Sunday in church. They took an offering for Jerusalem. They were giving church. Apostolic churches are generous. Yes. Mm. Generous churches. Mm. Incredible. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter how big your church is. That's right. You could be the most generous church in Boston. That's right. The most generous church in your region. Yes. Amen. And so they were a generous church, which means they gave people a generous church. That's right. That's right. Um, Amen. Yep. I got it. That's it. <coughs> then, well, rich people are all greedy. No, they're not. No, are rich. That's yes, right. And that might be why they're poor, because God can't exactly. trust them with anything else. That's right. It's not the only reason why we have poor people, but I want you to understand something. You can be generous as a poor person, like the woman who had nothing but like a penny, and she put that penny in the offering. Jesus is still talking about her because she's in the Bible. She put in more than everybody else. 
Because she put in all she had. It's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. Right. You could be generous as a poor person or greedy as a poor person. Yeah. Same thing being rich. Greedy as a rich person or generous. That's it. That's right. And then we see in Acts chapter 13, the narrative about Antioch continues. Oh, I love this. And it says in verse 1, Now there were at Antioch in the church prophets and teachers. Interesting, it tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, that God has set first in the church apostles. Some would say apostles, emerging leaders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Paul and uh, Saul, who became Paul, uh, became Paul, were called apostles. But this, in other words, this church generated an atmosphere for growth. Mm -hmm. it gives people room to grow, mm -hmm. room to develop, room to find their gifts and their calling. Mm -hmm. You know, I know some Christians that say for 30 years and they haven't grown for 30 years. Mm -hmm. 30 years in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I don't care how long you've been in church, doesn't mean you're mature. Mm -hmm. And then you have some people say for a year or two and they're so mature for their time in the Amen. Lord. It's amazing. Amen. And so, in place. So they were prophets and teachers. Eventually they became apostles. Mm -hmm. Then it says and not everybody's called to be an apostle but Barnabas and Saul are and were. Then it says that these prophets and teachers were whose nickname was black. Alright? And also black. Mm -hmm. So you have Barnabas, a real estate guy mm -hmm. You have two black men. Then, let's read on. Then there was Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch. Tetrarch is someone who is one of them called kings. So this guy was brought up with Herod. He was either a brother or a stepson of Herod's mother, but he shared the same mother. So now you had a politician with great political colleagues. We had Saul, who was raised. We start churches. Right. Those who haven't been in, uh -huh. in those kind of cases, right? Amen. Amen. A lot of us were so high and mighty until we went through the same things. <laughs> Some of the people we judged went through. Amen. That's right. Yeah, that's the truth. Uh, and the people who have been persecuted the most in this country probably are the least judgmental of others. So we see they were multi ethnic, they had emerging leaders. Oh, I love this. Verse 2. While they were ministering to the Lord mm -hmm. and fasting, they ministered to the Lord. Amen. Most people come to church to get ministered to. That's right. <laughs> yes, yes. You see that all over the Old Testament. So ministering to the Lord, an Old Testament concept, had to do with worshiping Worship. God, yes. adoring God, yes. spending time in God's yes. presence. Jesus said the Father seeks those to, who worship yes, him yes, in spirit yes. and in truth. He desires true worshipers. Yes. And, uh, and so if we come to church, we need to come first and foremost, not for our own needs, but to minister to God. Yes. I have called them. So Barnabas and Saul, according to this, already knew they were called. Mm -hmm. They got the word of the Lord. It says, set apart from me Barnabas and Saul for the word. Saul already got a word from the Lord that they were supposed to be go sent out of the church yeah. to send the nation from the elders in the church. Amen. Amen. That's good. Most wow. people just went, they were never sent. <laughs> Start dealing with yourself. Amen. Amen. Stop blaming others. Amen. And so these churches, these apostolic churches, were sending churches. I don't have a problem with anybody who God wants to send out because, quite frankly, they'll be a headache to me if they stay. <laughs> if you keep somebody too long, they're going to be a problem. That's right. Because this, they're going to get antsy and frustrated. Mm -hmm. But send people out. Amen. And we could plant other churches or others because that doesn't happen that often. It does happen. Mm -hmm. But what should happen, every single word and sent to the workplace. That's right. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. That's the problem. Only 2% of anybody in the church are going to be in full-time church ministry. You can't set the whole church up. 
just to plant churches and raise up pastors. Those are just some of the earmarks of an African Jerusalem church because they were apropos and had to be carried over as a foundation for the Antioch church. And we got into some of the principles of the Antioch. But we don't want to just have church. Come on. I remember, and I'm going to close in a minute or two. Pastor gave me four hours, but I'm going to. <laughs> Let me just close with this. Now, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> That's what I get for kidding around. I lose focus. Um, I was going to say something, and I don't remember what it was now. Uh, what was the last thing I said? Somebody help me. You're going to close? <laughs> and an apostolic church is a church that equips you for Sunday. I mean, in, during the service on Sunday for Monday. So in other words, mm -hmm. your mission begins when you leave the building. Amen. Yeah. God to uh, just infuse the apostolic mandate. Yes. We don't want to just be any church. Now, I do remember what the question started off the sessions. What is a church? Now, you would think that everybody knows the answer to that. They've been... Some of them were with me for 20 years. I said, well, are we a church? Just, uh, you know, we got a band, got a crowd, had an evangelistic meeting, you know, you know, according to the New Testament pattern. Of course, we're all church, logical, which is a fancy word, and who are a family to those who have no family. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. They might be a single mother. Yeah. They mm -hmm. need big brothers or spiritual fathers mm -hmm. under God. Yes. And as this Jesus community moves forward, we are bringing more people to God and increasing God's family. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just simplifying it. But the point is, we don't just want a crowd. That's right. Yeah. You get a close, you'll have a crowd. <laughs> Light yourself on fire, you'll have a crowd. What is a crowd? That's right. You can have fame right now. What is the point of a crowd? No, you want a purposeful Amen. community that follows Jesus with all these. Let's all stand up. Let's pray.